Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn the basic recipe for using OpenCL in Conrad, which can achieve computational speedup. Creating an OpenCL program requires writing codes for the host side, that is the CPU, as well as for the device side, that is the GPU. The host program tells the device to execute the kernel, but setup procedures must be performed in order to actually run the code, including initialization and execution. We start with the kernel program. Here we define a simple kernel function, which assigns a flow constant to the input array. We first need to get the index into the global data array. Before assignment, we need to perform a boundary check for the array. Then we add the value of pi to the element of the array. Now we start to implement the host program. The first thing to be done on the host side is to create a context using the function getStaticContext. And then we select the fastest device by using the function get max flaps device. We need to create the command queue object, which is used by the host to control the device to perform, for example, kernel execution or memory copy. To access the data on the device memory, a memory object must be created by the host. This is done by the function createFlowBuffer. The first argument specifies the global work size. The second argument specifies that the kernel will both read and write to the allocated memory. In order to execute the kernel on the device, it must first be compiled to a binary using an OpenCL compiler. The binary is then loaded and built, which can be achieved by using the function createProgram, followed by the function build. The only argument for the prior function is the source of the kernel program, which can be obtained through the static function get resource as stream. This function expects an argument of stream, which specifies the name of the kernel program.
The next step is to create a kernel object for each kernel function. The function create serial kernel has an input parameter specifying the name of the kernel function. Once the kernel object is created, the arguments to the kernel must be set. This can be done by using the function put args and put arg successively. The argument of the first function specifies the first argument of the kernel function, which is represented by the input buffer. The argument of the second function specifies the second argument of the kernel, that is, the number of elements to be passed in. Finally, we write the buffer data to the device, execute the kernel, and get the computed results back. We use the function put write buffer to write a buffer, and the function put read buffer to read. The first arguments of them specify the write and read buffer respectively. The second arguments specify if we want to block the read process or not. We should set it to true for synchronous copy of the buffer. After the buffer was written, we should call the function put 1d range kernel to execute the kernel, which has four arguments specifying the kernel, the global work offset, the global work size, and the local work size, respectively. Now we can run the host program. If this is the first time running OpenCL, a dialog will appear, prompting us to create a configuration file. Click Yes and choose the OpenCL device that is to use. Run again and we can see the values of some elements of the resulting buffer.